Heavenly Father, we praise you, Father. Lord, our prophet is unbelievably invaluable that you have given us this little lady to tell us what is just before us and to enhance the prophets of the scripture and bring to our dull minds the full picture because after all we are the most unintelligent race or, or generation to be on this earth due to our own neglect we ask your guidance but Lord with your Holy Spirit we will be the most enlightened and powerful to ever walk this planet spiritually that we may give this loud cry if we so choose we, we, we beg your Holy Spirit that he is here with us this day be with Bill as he's out west watch over him as he travels we pray for your people throughout this world who are involved in giving this second and third angels message may your people respond and may we get this work done and go home and we praise you this Sabbath day for the Sabbath day for Jesus and for your spirit, in Jesus' holy and precious name we pray, amen. I believe that we are the most the physically and mentally incapable generation to be on this planet since the fall, because we've made ourselves that way. Um, hopefully today, folks, I can conclude this with... Uh, the Holy Spirit with the Melchizedek priesthood as it's evolved into this it is a priesthood it's not just one or the other which is what the Canwright and Wagner believing group would have you believe and you know it's amazing to me this group of people they're bullies and what I mean by that is they're arrogant they're argumentative they're proud they have no problems with calling names and running people down. As I showed you last week reading that, I don't know what you would call it other than a piece of propaganda from the Ellen White estate written in 1990 to disprove the statements and the articles that appeared in, written by uh, Elder Haskell and Colcord in their papers while Ellen White was alive. And you might say, you know, why did they do that? Well, it's simple. Politics. They could not have, and, and, and on one, one aspect I can believe, I, I can understand, but I don't believe what the method they used. I can understand why they did it. Why did Mrs. White not come right out and put in writing what Elder Haskell said? And it's a simple situation also. And as I read in the article from Ministry Magazine, up until 1890, Ellen White was very, mm, there wasn't a whole lot that she said about Melchizedek. But it started heating up with Wagner, with Canwright, as I had said, and others. They were the spear, the, the point men on that. Uh, you had A.T. Jones involved. You had many of the writers, even Joseph Bates. Uh, and Mrs. White started making more and more statements. However, as, and this is how I know that the men that were present and the women at this meeting that took place in, in Australia were true, is because Ellen White refused to get drawn into these controversies and would not. She allowed it to go forward and, 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 and be published the way it was because it was true. However, she avoided a great deal and deflected a great deal of controversy that she had not the time, the energy for. The scripture says what it says. Paul says what he says in Hebrews 7 and 5 and 9. David in the Psalms refers to Melchizedek as being an eternal holy being. Mrs. White clearly stated that Melchizedek was not the holy uh, uh, Jesus Christ, but was deity. So that only leaves the Holy Spirit. 
Now you can gleam that from whatever you want, but there is a reason why we're here and looking at this, not for controversy. And like I said, those who want to disprove it and they use this and they use that, the founding fathers, well, the founding fathers you have to define because not all the founding fathers remained in the denomination. As a matter of fact, a lot of them did not. They left and they became protagonists, as we're seeing. And you have those picking up this chant today. And remember, folks, the unpardonable sin is the denying of the Holy Spirit. Beware where you tread. I will take what Paul says. I will take what Jesus said. I will take what David said. I will take what Ellen White said. And going back to the statement that came from the Ellen White Foundation, well, they were trying to deflect controversy, and they did it very, very poorly. Actually, despicably. I never would have put it out the way they did. That individual that did that uh, should have been fired because it was horrible what that man, what they did, whoever put that together. So we see clearly here in Hebrews 7, Paul identifies Melchizedek by the description as only being one being that it possibly could be. And that is the third person of the Godhead, and that is the Holy Spirit. And you want to put limitations on that, you go right ahead, but I call your attention to Acts of the Apostles, page 52, where Mrs. White says, silence is golden on the Holy Spirit because the nature of the Holy Spirit is not understood by men. However, and I'm putting this in there, the however part, what is said is said and very simple to comprehend. But they seek to dismantle and destroy, and that's the Luciferian influence, folks, in destroying the loud cry, period. Period. Cody, could you please close the door? There's a great deal of noise coming from the back. Or somebody. Anyhow, I... Uh, sincerely ask you to consider the scripture and its plain word thank you that what is said is said don't let these people put words in Paul's mouth or David's mouth or Stephen Haskell and the funny thing is these people who denounce Stephen Haskell you very probably have publications and writings from him in your house if you read Adventist material or cult court or whatever they were very powerful evangelists that finished the work of that time anyhow Cody you have something to say I want to move on now yeah I know I, I'm no no I you're fine I'm not talking about you I just no no you say what you need to say well I was gonna say I, I know that you're you're, you're segueing into something else here but um, I just wanted to mention that Hebrews is so clear about this mm -hmm. that if you believe it's a man, then you believe that a man can have the title of king of righteousness, king of peace. You also believe that a man is still abiding as a priest right now alongside Jesus Christ, which is elevating man to God. That's right. And so, and really, the reason why people get so upset about this is you already know. Yep. It's because they want to say that the Holy Spirit's not a person, and this identifies the person that he was in Scripture. And is. And, Cody, going along, and I can't, and I'm glad you brought this up, I can't stress this more. I have here, and I'm not going to read it, but this is a catechism from Rome. And the statement that Cody just made, of course it would be from Rome, regarding the Melchizedek priesthood, they claim... It is their authority to call their priests, not just the Pope, God. Okay, so if you believe what Cody just said, and this is many believe that, then you are right in line with Roman Catholic theology on this subject. They believe that because, they don't believe, they teach and claim that there are 
priests in heaven around God's throne because of this. Go look it up and read. I'm not going to read this. I, I, I will read this one paragraph. Eh, I lied, right? The church, and when, this is right from a Roman Catholic catechism. The church honors this image of Melchizedek. The catechism teaches the Christian tradition considers Melchizedek priests of the whole Most High God uh, as a prefiguration of the priesthood of Christ, the unique high priest after the order of Melchizedek, holy, blameless, unstained by the single offering he had perfected for all time, those who are sanctified, that is, by the unique sacrifice of the cross. That's number uh, 1544 CF-50. That's where you find it in the catechism. Moreover, the church sees in the gesture of the king priest Melchizedek, who brought out bread and wine as a prefiguration of her offering. Wow, transubstantiation came through this line to the Catholic church, which makes them divine. And that's number 1333. For this reason, the priest in the Eucharist prayer, I praise after the consecration, comma, comma, look with favor on these offerings and accept them as once you accepted the gift of your servant Abel, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the bread of wine offered by your priest Melchizedek. Now here they're saying that, uh, you know, the Catholics are the children of Abraham. Then it says, goes on to say, Let us therefore rejoice that Christ left us with the great gift of the priesthood that he continues to choose men to serve him in this way so that we might all come to worship him forever around his altar in heaven. Folks, did you catch what they're saying? So if you believe what these people, and that's not the whole catechism, I strongly recommend you go back and read it. So they're around the altar in heaven with Christ? They're priests ministering to man? Wow. All those, and this is down the lines with Canwright and Wagner, all those who are believing that what Paul says in Hebrews 7 is not truth and in other places believe this. Whether you like it or not, that's the only alternative. So this underlying thought is Roman Catholic giving power and authority to them, claiming the children of Abraham, as I read in Genesis 12, the blessing given to Abraham for all his people, all his, God's people, goes right to the Pope. That's what they're saying. Not Jesus and the Holy Spirit ministering in the capacity with Christ's blood from the foundations of the earth. No. Not that, but Roman Catholicism as the ultimate priesthood. Did you hear what I read? Around the throne in heaven with Christ, the priests. Wow. So they're the royal holy priesthood, not us. Not the blue stripe on that garment, the wedding garment that we are given. So that's what you believe, whether you know it or not. That's the spirit. That's why I said it's Luciferian if you do not believe what Paul and what the spirit of prophecy and what David had to say about Melchizedek and the Melchizedek priesthood. So it's not just this guy that met Abraham that's being questioned. It's the entire priesthood that's at stake here the priesthood that gives us salvation. And yes, well, and I've heard this, Paul, well, he said he was a man. Paul also says Jesus was a man. Mrs. White, though through this man, through one man came sin and through another man came salvation, Paul says about Jesus. Yes, while well, he was here on earth, that's exactly what he was in the form of God, in the form of man. Do you understand that? Because I don't, but I accept it. And we're told to leave it alone. Can the mind of God become a human here on earth to minister? Absolutely. 
How does that work? I have no idea. However, I accept what it says, and I'm grateful for what it says. Now, let's move on and see what the function of this service is. And you must always keep Zechariah 3 right here when you read this, because it is important to comprehend Zechariah 3 when you understand the Melchizedek priesthood. Why Zechariah 3? Because it takes the Levitical priesthood, Zerubbabel or Joshua, it's interesting that the man's name was Joshua, too, because that was also a name for Jesus in the Old Testament, Yeshua. And gives him new clothing. He told Jesus, he told Je Jesus told Nicodemus, he being Jesus, that unless a man is born again of water and of spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. And he explained the Holy Spirit as a wind that comes and goes. But you know what's amazing about a wind, folks? Especially people in Florida understand what a wind can produce. It is, I would say, without any exception, the single most powerful element on earth above water and fire. Why did I say that? With exception of the flood, there was always some place you can go to get away from rising water. Same with fire, but when a wind comes in a region, nowheres can you get away from it. Nowheres. It is a force to be reckoned with. It is a force that is overwhelming, and it will lay low everything in its path. So when Jesus used the wind with Nicodemus, them being a farming, them being the Jews, a agricultural community, realize the destruction of the wind. And you see, the wind can bring in its wake much destruction, or before it, for instance, locusts. How are they driven? By wind. So when he used wind with Nicodemus to describe the Holy Spirit, you don't know where it comes from, you don't know where it goes to, but you see its effect. Exactly the Holy Spirit. Exactly what Mrs. White said in Acts of the Apostles, page 52, when she said, leave it alone, other than what is known about it. Not these fools who are running around bolstering the Roman Catholic priesthood by declaring that they know what the Holy Spirit is. So by saying that what the Bible says about the Holy Spirit is not accurate, they're upholding the Roman Catholic priesthood. It's that simple. You can't have it either way. I just proved that with a few sentences from some catechisms. I keep pointing over there because that's where the paperwork is. And this is one of the reasons why the White Foundation did what they did with it, which was despicable. Absolutely despicable. So, without any further ado, let's see what our Savior had to say about the Holy Spirit. And again, in the 1890s, this issue heated up with Ellen White, with the fledgling Seventh-day Adventist movement because it was wreaking havoc through the Founding Fathers, by the way. So when you hear Founding Fathers run, run. See, I'm naming names, okay? Ellen, James White, Stephen Haskell, Colcord, A.T. Jones, Bates, Joseph Bates, who had to, these were founding fathers, and they had to say about these things. But all you ever hear is the other side, the apostates, which came, their theology from 1844, the uh, spiritual Millerite movement that was devastating to Adventism. You see, you don't know this, right? You never hear that, right? Well, go study it and research it. Okay, having said that, I want to move on because, folks, the book of Acts, you must understand the working of the Holy Spirit to the best of your ability to comprehend the book of Acts. Otherwise, you can't. Jesus said, when you are converted, what was another way to say, when you have the Holy Spirit at your disposal, that's another way to say that. 
Then you will understand, Peter, John, James, etc., etc. And they did. Because only after the Holy Spirit was received in the upper room did they become apostles. And it will be the same at this time in Earth's history. Let's see what Jesus had to say about the Holy Spirit. Now again, this is not correct. This was not recorded properly. It was changed. This is always their answer. Attack, attack the writer, the individual, the person. Don't offer any facts that will prove your point. Just keep attacking and claiming. Plagiarism. This, that. Oh, you can't read anything past 1884. Yeah, they don't want you to because it disproves, disproves everything that they're saying. It was changed, but you produce proof that it was not changed. Ellen White approved of these things and was involved in them. Well, those letters are forgeries. Really? <laughs> wow. But, you see, while she was alive, she wouldn't speak out against them, though. Isn't that interesting? Which she always did when it was important. Always, without exception. Some say that I said this, and she will say I did not say this. You don't think that little meeting over there in Australia when it went viral, as we say today, her comments on the Holy Spirit, she would not have disclaimed that? You don't know anything about the spirit of prophecy. You know nothing of the spirit of prophecy, but then that's Adventism today because I recently have met two people who have been lifelong Adventists who did not know, literally did not know what the spirit of prophecy is or was and asked, how do I get it? Lifelong Adventists, officers in churches. Sad, I hope they get it. John 16, verse 5. But now I go my way, this is Jesus talking, to him that sent me. And none of you ask me whither thou goest. And by the way, last night, Rita and I uh, are watching, uh, going back through some of the Walter Fight videos. Yes, Walter Fight. Didn't throw the baby out with the bathwater. And it's amazing to me how that man could have gone back to the conference after what he's done and said in the past about battle of the Bibles. If you have anything other than the King James Version and you have a lie, a total and complete demonic Roman Catholic ecumenical lie, which was not perpetrated just this time on the Adventist church, but you go back in history and Rome has done this more than once. As a matter of fact, if you go back to the Greeks, they did this to corrupt the texts so that academia was more important. And when you find out all their scholars were all connected to satanic temples, that's why one of them drank hemlock, because he gave some of the secrets away and he had to die. So it was either, I forget, the other option was um, hacked up, burnt, and his tongue cut out, or drank hemlock. And he drank that, who was that? Hippocrates that did that, I believe. And they hold him way up here, but he was an agent of Satan. Socrates. Socrates, thank you, Cody. But all these guys were connected to satanic religion. And they're, who's running our education system today, their, their theologies and so on. So, if you don't have a King James Version, you do not have you do not have the Holy Bible in your home. You have a, a Roman Catholic prostitute. That's what you have, and you will become drunk on the wine of Babylon if you keep reading your NIVs and RSVs and this V and that X and this. No, no. Go back and watch that video, Battle of the Bibles. What? We watched it. Well, watch the first part and watch the second part this afternoon because it stimulates the old brain cells again. Anyhow, verse 6, But because I have said these things unto you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away, for if I do 
not go away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Okay, who is this Comforter? What does this word mean? <laughs> I've told you this many times. The only place this word appears in the Scripture is with Jesus using it in the upper room in John uh, 15. Uh, whenever he refers to the Holy Spirit, John 14, wherever he used, it's actually John 14, John 16, wherever it, Jesus referred to the Holy Spirit, that you will find this at uh, reference number 3875 in the concordance, and it is intercessor, counselor, advocate. This is a person that has to fill this job. Now, before we go any further, this is another one that the naysaying crowd hates, the book Desire of Ages. Of course, we debunked all their foolishness about this book. Again, in that article from Ministry Magazine where Ellen White, her notes, at least four examples about this book, using he and it to describe the Holy Spirit in her own writing, and one notation that says that she approves of the book, and she paid for the plates to publish the book. So all this lying about it's a counterfeit, she didn't know anything about it, the, the, the editors, the secretaries put these words in there, absolutely not. They all came from her pen which was inspired by the Holy Spirit, ergo the spirit of prophecy. I want to read this in, in relationship to this statement that Jesus just made. The Holy Spirit is Christ's representative. Here's another statement made by her. It is not Christ. It, he is, how could he be, anybody, it be anybody's representative if there's not a body to represent the original? That's absurd. You're insulting my intelligence to tell me that. But this was incorrect, and you're right. Your Roman Catholic theology is correct. This is not. The Holy Spirit is Christ's representative, but divested of the personability of, the personability of humanity and independent thereof. In other words, deity, not locked in. And this is, she's going to explain it. Cumbered with humanity, Christ could not be in every place personally. So he did not have omnipresence when he was, after he uh, uh, incarnated into human form. This is why the Holy Spirit, number one, represents Christ. And number two is one of the Melchizedek priests. So they both can fulfill the office of the high priest, just as in Israel, it wasn't just one high priest, just as Zechariah 3, there were other high priests. Isn't that interesting? Remember, this priesthood was a model of the one in heaven, remember? So Jesus was no longer omnipresent. Therefore, it was for their interest that he should go to the Father and send the Spirit to be his successor on earth. Folks, that's a pretty definite statement. No one could then have any advantage because of... Uh, because of his location or his personal contact with Christ. But the Spirit, the Savior, or by the Spirit, the Savior would be accessible to all. In this sense, he would be nearer to them than if he had not ascended on high. Folks, that's simple. So why? Why? I'm not done with that book. Why did... Melchizedek meet Abraham? Why did Melchizedek minister to Abraham the blessing? Because, as Paul says, it is so crystal clear. Being made after the likeness, you see, 
of Christ. Isn't that what he says back here in Hebrews 7? Let's read what he says. He says, um, Without mother, without father, without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like unto the Son of God, abideth a high pri abideth a priest continually. That means forever. Do you get it? So Melchizedek, the king of Salem, was made after Jesus' human form that he would be incarnating into as Mary's son to minister to God's people here on earth the blessing of his blood and flesh flesh and blood and the tithe to continue the work what is the work the second now and third angel's message for this for now but I tell you the second angel's message is closing closing up what is the second angel's message and Bill and I were having this discussion yesterday. He was bored. His flight was four hours late, so he called me, and we talked for a while. Adventists, Seventh-day Adventists, you need to make some choices what you're going to do. I see many people that come here just on this little level. Oh, well, we couldn't come. The whole family's not here. There's a program at the local church, and they're involved in it. You're going to have to make a choice. Come out of her, my people. Touch not the unclean thing. It is so evident the apostasy that the denomination is buried under and the ecumenical movement. Can you say Baal Peor? You know, folks, I'm going to say it again. When... Phineas stuck the spear through the prince and the princess, the Midianitish prince, I believe she was, it doesn't matter, and pinned them to the ground. He was killing ecumenism. And where were the children of Israel, folks? I'm sorry I keep moving, folks, but I need to do that for physical reasons. Where were they? Anywheres? What I mean by that, in their 40 years sojourn, where were they? On the borders of the promised land, preparing to enter. What had to happen? A faithful priest of the Most High God took a prince, a leader, a general conference leader. Actually, you could probably say he was a personal ministry leader who was out messing with the apostate Protestant nations, took a daughter of one of their kings, a princess, and was having sex with her. Openly amongst God's people. Spiritual fornication. What's the seventh commandment? What is it? Thou shalt not commit adultery. It's interesting. It's the seventh commandment, the seventh day Sabbath. On a spiritual level, that's exactly what they were doing. And a faithful priest did what to both of them? He didn't kill any common people. These were super high-ranking officials representing both religions and an amalgamation of both. Do you get it? Do you get it? If you don't, you have serious spiritual issues. Forget the physical aspect of it. What are the ramifications on a spiritual level, I ask you? And what happened after that? The plague hit. And who stopped the plague? Well, when this happens, when it comes, there'll be no stopping it this time. It's going to do its work 100%. And into the promised land, there were those that only went in because of fear of what happened, but didn't belong there. Well, that's not going to happen this time. As I tell people, Ham was the apostate that came out of the ark and started sun worship again. Well, there ain't going to be no Ham in the ark this time. It's going to be a total and complete cleansing. And who's going to make that decision? Who? The Holy Spirit. Because it's him that's going to seal. 
So Jesus could not be everywhere at once. Abraham did see deity. And it does say in Desire of Ages, as I read last week, Abraham would say when Jesus, this is Melchizedek, absolutely, but not Jesus Christ, that he saw Abraham, but he understood this situation, though, we're told. That's what it says in Desire of Ages 669. So it is more expedient, I'm back in John, that I go away. Why? Because then the Holy Spirit will come. Where is the Holy Spirit, I wonder, by the way? What was he doing? Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, verse 7. I'm going to read that out of the Bible here in a minute, where he was and what he was doing. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away for if I go not away the comforter will not come unto you but if i depart i will send him unto you and when he is come do you notice the he and hems here folks jesus was confused on this matter as we're told john didn't know how to record this stop it it's in perfect harmony with hebrews 7 and what abraham saw Perfect harmony, a he and a him. Now I tell you, when it descended as a dove, I would call it an it at that point. <laughs> but remember, Mrs. White says, we really don't know everything about this. Leave it alone. Just take what's written. And when he comes, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment of sin because they believe not on me of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more, of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. Isn't that amazing? At that point, Lucifer was judged and doomed to the lake of fire. A lot of people don't understand that technically up until the point that Lucifer crucified the Son of God, the Lamb that takes away the sin of the world, he could have recanted and repented. No, that sealed his fate. You see why he doesn't want us to have the Holy Spirit? He doesn't want us to be close to Christ. That's the only way we can be, through his ministration. So who's in charge of the church on earth, by the way? According to everything I've read, it would be the Holy Spirit. Through whose Jesus' commands, and Jesus, as it says in Revelation, takes what the Father shows him in the first couple of verses of Revelation 1 and shows us. See, in perfect harmony with Zechariah 3, isn't it? Perfect harmony with what Abraham saw in Genesis. Perfect harmony with what Paul says in Hebrews. See, if you start believing this other garbage from Canwright and Wagner, it doesn't fit. Then you have to come up with different explanations. And who supplies that explanation? Demons do. Through Roman Catholic theology, it's called the wine of Babylon. And I'm sure the prince and the princess on, the, on, on uh, Baal Peor that were ran through by the faithful priest were drunk. I'm sure they were partying. And spiritually on the wine of Babylon. Of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. I have you many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. Yeah, because you don't have the Holy Spirit. How be it? When he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that he shall speak. And when he will show you these things, ah, and will show you these things. I want to read out of, again, this wonderful book, Desire of Ages, about this. This is, uh, what page am I looking for? 671. And by the way, uh, oh, yes, before I read this, I said uh, I want to go to Romans 826. Again, perfect harmony with what's being taught here. This is Paul. Of course, it's Romans. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. 
Well, and, and, and he's talking about our spiritual issues, not a cut on our finger. It's not a Holy Spirit band-aid. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searches the hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good, to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. Now, Mrs. White says here, Christ, our mediator, and the Holy Spirit are constantly interceding in man's behalf. Did you hear what she said? The Melchizedek priesthood is constantly interceding on our behalf. Jesus there, him here, the Holy Spirit. Abraham knew him as Melchizedek making intercession for the cities of the plains and the people until they denied him and then judgment came. That's why Abraham said it is Melchizedek when Mrs. White says Abraham would have said this. Absolutely he would have. What else would he have said? This, what she was saying is the Holy Spirit impressed Abraham's mind so seared it in the plan of redemption through the Melchizedek priesthood, when he would have seen Jesus, he knew that he was going to make that sacrifice. And the blood that was being ministered with in his day came from that, even though it hadn't happened yet. Again, Revelation 13, 8, the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. But the Spirit pleads not for us as does Christ who presents his blood shed from the foundations of the earth the spirit works upon our hearts drawing our prayers and penitence praise and thanksgiving the gratitude which flows from our lips is the result of the spirit striking the chords of the soul in the holy uh, memories awakening the music of the heart this is exactly what he was doing while Jesus was here on the earth making intercession not as Jesus does but taking our prayers, the prayers of those who were faithful at that time, and they were being sprinkled with the blood of Christ that was shed from the foundation of the earth, and the Holy Spirit was cleaning them up and presenting them to the Father for him to answer the prayers of the saints while Jesus was here. Do you understand that? Zechariah 3, folks. Is that so hard to comprehend? Jesus could not have been there. I just read the reason why. It is better that I go so he can come. Why? Because somebody had to be making intercession. Not as Jesus is going to do it. Yes, and Jesus is also part of the investigative judgment. The Holy Spirit is not. Not as he does. However, that base was covered. You see, through the Melchizedek priesthood. If you don't comprehend that, you know nothing. Nothing of intercession. And I suggest you start studying it. There had to be a representative in front of God in the holy holies in heaven at all times. Up until the time Jesus said it is finished and comes out. Then there is none and everybody's fate is sealed. That is clear. So if Jesus was not doing it while he was here, he could not do it because he was not omnipresent. The Holy Spirit was doing it. Not as Jesus does. No according to what his capabilities that the Father gave him to do. But it was capable of covering. You see, an angel couldn't do it. It had to, it has to be deity, and there's three. If you don't believe that, then you have no idea what you believe, because then the plan of redemption will not work. Without a representative before the Father, it will not work. Had to be. This is what Mrs. White says about the Holy Spirit. And this is uh, page uh, uh, 671. It says, In describing to his disciples the office of the Holy Spirit, Jesus sought to impress them with the joy and hope that inspired his own heart. He rejoiced because of the 
abundant help he had provided for the church. The Holy Spirit was the highest of all gifts that he could solicit from his Father for the exaltation of his people. Why could he not make intercession? That's absurd. And remember, Paul says in, in Romans 8, 26, that the Spirit knows the mind of God. <laughs> so he knows how to make intercession. No angel knows that. No pope knows that. The Spirit was to be given as a regenerating agent. And without this, the sacrifice of Christ would have been of no avail. So... What went on for 33 and a half years while Jesus was here? No intercessor, no avail. Had to be some, had, deity had to be in front of that throne of the Father in heaven making intercession. Remember, the angels were having issues as to whether Lucifer was right or not. Who was making intercession while Jesus was here? I just read to you where the Holy Spirit through Ellen White's pen said Jesus could not do it. I read to you where Paul says through, uh, the Holy Spirit says through Paul's pen, because by the way, that's the spirit of prophecy also. That not as the same as Jesus, of course not. However, he could make intercession. If you don't believe this, you know nothing of the plan of salvation, the plan of redemption, the investigative judgment. You know nothing of it. There has to be three. Otherwise, it does not work. Jesus is not omnipresent, so all you spiritualistic Wagnerites and Canrightites, your whole theory falls on its face made after the likeness of the Son of Man in the priesthood, absolutely. The power of evil has been strengthened for centuries, and the submission of men to this satanic capacity was amazing. Sin could be risked, listen to this, sin could be resisted and all, all overcome only through the mighty agency of the third person of the godhead who would come with no modified energy in other words in his full power this is what jesus was giving us but the fullness but in the fullness of divine power this is who was ministering to abraham it is the spirit that makes effectual what has been wrought out by the world's redeemer. That's why he could make intercession in heaven, in heaven. Not as Christ, but as a Melchizedek priest. It is by the spirit that the heart is made pure. Through the spirit, the believer becomes a partaker of the divine nature. Christ has given his spirit as a divine power to overcome all hereditary and, con and cultivated tendencies to evil and to impress his own character upon his church. Oh, it says Christ's spirit again. Yes. I don't understand what all that means, but then I don't understand, though he were God, he were man, and I'll leave it at that. I'm not going to try and explain that. We're told that we're messing with things we shouldn't be, and it's satanic. And this is why this study will go on through all eternity. This is what we're going to study, the nature of the Holy Spirit and the nature of the plan of redemption. This is what we will study, not just us, angels and other creations. We will go and instruct them when it says that we will defend the character of God throughout the universe. What does that mean? You're going to be teachers. You will be a royal holy priesthood going doing your job and instructing and explaining this. That is why this can never happen again. If you don't believe that, then just go join the Catholic Church. Stop playing. Or I tell you, go down and find a satanic temple in your town and become one of them so you will get all of the riches and wealth that the devil can give you in your station in this earth. Don't live like this. Don't live with one foot in hell and one foot in heaven and the earth in between. Don't settle for, 
for, for, for, for Mr. Diop and Ted Wilson's ecumenical border of bail PR, PR, relig bail PR religion? Having spiritual relations with heathen deities? Because it's going to get pinned to the ground and run through. This is simple stuff. Easily understood. But we don't want to study and we don't want to be a royal holy priesthood. We don't want that blue and gold uh, a blue uh, border on our robes. We don't want to wear the helmet of righteousness, holiness to God. There has to be three in the Godhead in order to carry out the plan of redemption and or the same thing, the Melchizedek priesthood, which will be through all eternity, which will give us our authority, those who are redeemed from the earth, to defend the character and law of God, which is one and the same, through the entire universe and be studying and learning through all eternity and developing character. See, because what we get here to go to heaven is the bare minimal requirements to get in. After that, the education really starts. Remember, what does Paul say? Studying and looking into things that angels desire to look into? Folks, it's that simple. This is why I could not continue in the book of Acts without a comprehension of the Melchizedek priesthood because the Melchizedek priesthood, while it ministered to Abraham and his people in his day, took root at Pentecost in the upper room and is only going to be accelerating all through the ages to the close of probation. And us, we, the last people of God, whether it's me or my children, whatever, will have the Holy Spirit, as it says, with no filter. But we have to choose to want that. And these fools that are going around, there is no Holy Spirit. They're Roman Catholic. They're talking catechisms. They're apostates. They have not a leg to stand on. All they can do is attack, attack, and belittle, and demean, and call people liars, and, and this and that, but they have no evidence. The founding fathers, many of the founding fathers were apostates and were drummed out, as it were. And you're just repeating their mantras. And, and, and read this and read that. How about you read the Bible in the spirit of prophecy? How about that? You will come away with a very different idea. The truth. Not what I say. Not what Cody or Bill Hughes or Jan Markison, et cetera, et cetera, or any of us say. No. But what the Holy Spirit says. He, it says. He. That's how come for 33 and a half years... Everybody that was faithful to God will be saved because the Holy Spirit was making intercession. Not as Christ. Not as Christ. No. They have different functions. However, they're both advocates and intercessors because they foresaw this issue and they met this issue. So, reconsider your position and next week we're, well next time I'm up here I don't know what it is we're going to go forward in the book of Acts understanding who's in control who's in charge and where the power is coming from and what our responsibilities are going to be as we are preparing to receive the latter rain but you cannot receive it unless you heed the second angel's message come out from amongst them. Come out of the apostasy. You can't be running back and forth. Can't do it. And there are many independents that are in deep apostasy with the health message and many, many other things. The Holy Spirit issue. They're in deep apostasy. But as we look in the book of Acts, who was in charge of the church? Where were they getting their authority from? Where was their power coming from? Where were people being healed? How? And through what agency? Medical missionary work. 
It's all there. But you have to understand the Holy Spirit. And if you're not willing to accept the Holy Spirit for what the spirit of prophecy says it is, that includes the scripture. When I say that, I mean both. Because the Holy Spirit inspired men to write this Bible, folks. And some women. So, you need to consider your position if you want the latter rain. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your clear, clear words. It is so simple. Here a little, there a little, line upon line, precept upon precept. We see the ministration of the Melchizedek priesthood all through the Old Testament. With what? The blood of your son. Through whom? Your spirit and your son. We see all through the New Testament the ministration of your, uh, uh, of your son's blood to the Melchizedek priesthood. Through what agencies? Your son and your Holy Spirit. We are foolish. Please have mercy on us. May our minds be opened. And as Jesus said, there are many things that he wants to tell us, but we certainly are not ready. But our day in the upper room is coming if we are faithful. And there will be no more fear, only an army mighty with banners, as Solomon says, under the blood-stained banner of Prince Emmanuel. Please be with us. We beg you, have mercy on us, and Lord, may we cling to your promises. Help us to complete this Sabbath day in honor of you and not violate it. In Jesus' holy name, we pray.